Hi and welcome to a new section in this course. This section is dedicated to Node Red. I'm going to talk a little bit about what Node Red is and give you some examples of its use so you can get a better idea of what it is that we're about to do. Uh, and then in the next few lectures in this section, I'll show you how to install it on your Raspberry Pi and uh, explain the use of some of its most important nodes and how they work inside Simple Flows. So first off, what is Node Red? So Node Red is a programming tool. Actually, it's a better way to describe it as a programming environment. It uses graphical flows and nodes, which are the individual components in a flow, to essentially create a program. What I really like about Node Red is that it is both graphical, so it gives you the like the, the visual capability of creating a program, but also it allows you a lot of functional control through JavaScript, which is the programming language that is underlying Node Red. The home of Node Red on the web is nodered.org, which you are looking at right here. And just scrolling down this page, you will see its basic features. So it's basically a programming environment that operates inside a browser. Uh, you create graphical programs which are called flows and flows are, are composed of nodes which are these rectangular items that you see in this mock-up screen here it uses a drag and drop interface and you can assign those nodes in a variety of configurations each node does something specific or you can program it so that it does exactly the tasks that you want it to do uh, node red comes with uh, several built-in nodes, but you can also install third-party nodes, just like in the Arduino, you can install third-party libraries. And I'm going to show you more about this in a moment. The name Node Red comes from the underlying technology on which it is built, which is Node.js, which is a JavaScript framework. It's a very lightweight uh, development environment and uh, runtime environment, which makes it excellent for creating applications that are, are it's supposed to be very nimble and very fast in their execution. So they can run on low cost hardware, such as the Raspberry Pi. Node Red is open source, and uh, as a result, there's uh, a lot of people that are contributing to it. It's been around for a long time and is really stable and uh, uh, used by hobbyists and large corporations alike. All right, so I'm um, going to show you a quick demonstration of uh, what Node Red looks like. And I've got Node Red here installed on my Raspberry Pi 4. And this is the version of the flow that makes up the brains of the Terrarium controller. I talked about this in an earlier uh, lecture in this course. But I also want to show you a few other flows that I have designed. And, and as you can see in the uh, web editor and the web browser editor, you can have flows under tabs. And now all of these flows are actually deployed and are operating at the same time. So this one here, for example, is a DHT22 sensor. This one will just trigger uh, the sensor every 10 seconds and get a reading. So here's another flow. It's a little bit more elaborate. This one uses the MQTT in node to get data it subscribes to an mqdt topic every time that there is a new item in the queue it will trigger this node and then the data from that item will be passed on to other nodes down the flow where those nodes can either be uh, a function node such as this one here where we've got a little bit of javascript doing something with the data it has received processing it or uh, in this case here you can see that we are using a http post uh, node which forwards the data to a iot application this happens to be tweet.io so that uh, the flow can communicate with other applications elsewhere on the internet. A few other examples here, we can use timestamps, we can use webhooks. Um, this is a manual trigger, I can press on this button, you can see that in, it injects a particular piece of data, it happens to be a text message, but it can be any of those other things into the flow, which is then printed out by the payload. So if I 
expand this menu just clean this up and let's see uh, go for the current flow uh, only notifications and uh, you can see that as i'm triggering the hello node uh, i get a message coming out which has been created by the debug uh, node right here so here we've got a websocket node so we can use websockets as well um, in this example here, I've got again a manual inject node, which passes a bit of data to a function node. Then this function node will split the data into three components and then create three outputs. And it sends each component to a separate output, All right? So those will go out and you can see actually the first and the second output go both to message two. If I expand my sidebar here and go for current flow let's say i trigger the inject node and you can see i had node one which is message one printed out one then message two printed out one and two because i've got this connected to the first and the second output of the function and then we've got um, message three or node message three which prints out number three right so it just gives you an idea of what you can do here with these flows and what flows look like. On the left uh, toolbar, I've got all the nodes that are available. Most of the nodes that you can see here are built into node red, but a couple of them such as, let's see, um, the dashboard collection uh, is a third party I uh, see there's a library, it's an add-on that you can install and then you can use to create graphical user interfaces. So if you go to back to my terrarium and expand the sidebar, you can see here I've got the dashboard which is created by uh, the dashboard collection and that creates the dashboard that you see here that is part of the terrarium project. All right, so I, I hope that this gives you a good overview of what Node Red is and how you can use it in your projects. One more thing that I want to note here before we move on to the next lecture, which is the installation of Node Red on the Raspberry Pi, is documentation. Node Red has got amazing documentation. If you're just starting now, I recommend you have a look at Getting Started and then the User Guide. So Getting Started shows you how to install the application or the, the environment on a variety of computers. I'll be following the instructions in the Raspberry Pi box. And then apart from that, uh, the user guide contains everything that you need to know in order to get started. I'm only gonna be touching a few items out of this list. These are the items that we absolutely need for our project, but in order for you to have a better and a complete understanding of Node Red, I encourage you to have a look, at least browse through the contents of the user guide. Apart from that, depending on what you want to do, you'll find tutorials and a cookbook also very useful. So the cookbook, for example, tells you exactly how to do specific things. There's a fairly comprehensive list here. All right, so having said all that, let's move on to the next lecture now, where I'll show you how to install Node Red on the Raspberry Pi. Just keep in mind that uh, the Raspbian OS or Raspberry Pi OS does come with Node Red already installed, but I prefer to just go for a fresh install so we have total control of what is running on your Raspberry Pi.